like what the what the hell has happened to me and it's the second day <laughs> so Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, in this video, I'm starting my new series called Vaganova Chats, where I share stories from my time at Vaganova, the good and the bad. I think most people are interested in uh, the bad a little bit more <laughs> than the good. Um, and I'm actually really excited to share um, more with a lot of you because, you know, looking at social media, looking at these Vaganova videos and sort of, especially the exams, you know, the end result, and it can all look extremely amazing and um, fantastic and very well put together and everyone's at the top of their game. Um, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes, obviously, like nothing's perfect. I want to share a little bit today about my time in, it was my graduation year. And as you can guess by the title, <laughs> I hurt my back. So let's begin. It was the summer before I went back to school for my final year. I'd been there three years and I was starting to do really well. Um, the year before my graduation was the year that people really started to take notice of me and respect me. My teacher had, um, well, we changed teachers that year, the, the third year. Um, from Maria Maria Grabanova to Irina Sidnikova and um, I can share more about that previous year in another episode. The summer before my graduation year however I was used by the Mikhailovsky Ballet to work with them all summer at the Coliseum doing Swan Lake and you know it was a great experience for me I wasn't even graduated they offered me a job as well and I said hey like I <laughs> I um I really need to um you know finish my schooling um and that was a big decision for me but it, I knew it was the right decision however I'd um worked myself into the ground and I was also you know very thin at the time um, which again, that can be another episode. <laughs> um, and so I was kind of running a bit on empty for a while. I didn't really notice. I just noticed all of a sudden my back was hurting quite a lot. Um, and it had started hurting towards the end of the year and then into the summer, it was hurting quite a lot. And it was just kind of, at this point, just sort of a burning sensation into my spine. In different parts of my spine, I had a bit of a burning feeling. Nothing major though, and it was something I could sort of ignore. Um, it had come from stretching too much and stretching a lot. I became obsessed with stretching and obsessed with back bending, especially, and I was doing extreme back bends on a regular basis. And you can imagine, you know, over time that can have uh, an effect and at that point in my life, I didn't know when to call it a day or when to stop or when to give myself an easier day. I was basically, you know, go, 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 24-7, don't rest, you can't have a day without stretching, that kind of thing. And obviously, you know, I achieved, I achieved being very flexible and I achieved, you know, a lot, but then this happened. So I'd finished the summer and then I was in a lot of pain and my teacher, the first, um, just before we went back, my teacher said, you know, have you put on any weight? Because I was very thin. Um, and again, I'll go into more detail another time. And I said, well, I think so, a little bit. <laughs> um, and she said, right, good. And so I turned up and, you know, I'd probably looked a little bit healthier. Um, However, my back was hurting and I hadn't let on to that because I was very afraid to tell her I had pain. And then it was um, our first week back at Vaganova and, you know, I was slightly terrified. My back was hurting and it was the first week of our graduation year. And I think it was like the second day and the second day, can you imagine? It was like September the 5th 
and we'd done two days at Vaganova. The graduation year, the most important year of your life so far. <laughs> and I was doing nothing major at all. We were doing like a jeté combination in the middle in the um, in the studio and I was just going jeté, jeté, jeté. <gasps> and then like it was honestly the worst pain I'd ever experienced in my life. Obviously my back was just like about to go at any point and um, it was literally like someone had stabbed me in the spine and I winced and I kind of was winded by the pain. So I just basically was like, <gasps> and I hobbled to the side of the room and was just holding onto the bar, just like, <sighs> like that. And I was just like, you know, I don't want to swear, I can't, but I was literally like, <laughs> you know, like what the, what the hell has happened to me? And it's the second day. <laughs> so I, um, uh, hobbled off and she was like, what's wrong? And I was like, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, <laughs> ouch. <laughs> and then um, we had pas de deux that day. And I was just like, you know, how the, I don't know how I'm gonna get through the pas de deux. And then we did, um, it was the first class um, back at pas de deux, and we were doing, you know, a la seconde turn into ponche with the guy. And the going from a la seconde into arabesque ponche I still remember it like yesterday. I honestly thought the pain was unbelievable. And I thought, you know, I'm screwed here. Um, there's something horribly wrong here. So after that, I ran, it, we were in um, the Repsal, which is the main studio with the picture. And there's two doors at the back. And we were, at this point in time, the school was using those doors. They were renovating, so we were using the stairs behind. And there's a big, like, extra bit of stairs behind. And um, I ran out into the corridor and hid um, and burst into tears and rang my mum <laughs> immediately and said, Mum, like, something's really horribly wrong with my back and I'm in so much pain and I, I can't do the class and I don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do. And, um, you know, the class was still going on and I said to my partner, like, I can't, like, I can't, I can't do it. Just dance with, um, you know, the other girl that he was pairing with. I said, I can't come back in. <laughs> and I was so terrified to go, you know, go and tell the teacher because, because of the fact it was this, you know, second or third day. It's like, what have you been doing all summer, you know? That's your time to rest. And um, so I, to cut a long story short, I mucked through for like a week. I couldn't last longer than that, like a week. And um, I was barely doing any of the class. Like my teacher said, what's wrong? I said, my back's really hurting. I can't, I can't forwards pour de bra. I can't back bend. I can't lift my leg in arabesque. I can't do anything like. <laughs> And I started doing a little bit of the class and obviously, you know, I, I was one of her main people of the class that year. Like she wanted me not on the sidebar struggling, she wanted me on the centre working my ass off, you know, getting ready for this important year, me to do Masha and the Nutcracker, me to do everything, um, you know. And so for her to see me there was difficult as well. Like, she was like, what's happened to one of my star pupils? And then she came up to me one day and she said, you know, um, is it any better? And I said, no, no, it's not. I think I need to go home and get a scan on it. And she said, okay, go get a scan. So I went home, got a scan, and um, nothing was shown on my MRI. Not really. And I was like, oh, great. It could just be, you know, sprained muscle, hopefully. And um, I then had a CT scan. CT makes it much clearer for bone if you've broken it. Um, so I had the CT scan and then I went into this um, spinal surgeon's office and he was all happy and Larry and I was like, oh, maybe it's not so bad. And then I looked on his screen and it was like purple, 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 red. <laughs> and I was like, oh dear. He was like, yeah, so um, you fractured your back. And I was like, 
okay, great. <laughs> Fractured my back. And my mum was with me, obviously, and she was just like, <sighs> bye bye, graduation year. Um, and he said, but you're lucky. You're very lucky because you've broken your back. I was waiting for the lucky part. Um, about three quarters of the way through. So in L3, which is right down the base of your spine. And he said, had you fractured it all the way through, um, you would have needed surgery um, because that bone does not heal on its own. You need to have screws put in to hold the bone together. But because your back is not completely broken, it will heal. Um, so I was like, okay, thank God, no spinal surgery required. And I discovered this type of injury is very um, common with like cricket players who go like that. You know, they, they twist the spine like that. And basically I'd been twisting my back over and over and over and over again um, to stretch. And, um, you know, getting it to go more and more and more. And I was very thin. So my bone density was low. I wasn't healthy in my bones. So with those two at play, I was wearing down my bones and then one day, you know, I broke it. Um, bone density is super important, everyone. <laughs> um, more on that next week. Um, yeah, so I spent, after that, I was obviously mortified, absolutely mortified. I thought, okay, what the hell am I gonna say to them? And I just said to her initially, I said, well, it's not good. I've, you know, hurt and fractured it and I'll probably need a few months off. And after that, um, it was, I was off from September. I knew I had, you know, I was gonna miss Nutcracker. I was gonna miss that opportunity, which was very sad. And I knew I had until April um, or May. April, I think I, um, I think I went back in end of March, April, because you know, the exam was in May, I think, or April, so I might have gone back in March. I had about six weeks. So I recovered, I, I did so much rehab. I met these amazing Australians here in London um, at APPI, and um, you should look them up. Fantastic rehab people. Um, and, and I also did a lot of gyrotonics um, with Elaine Piren who works at Studio 74 um, here in London. And with those two people helping me, I managed to get myself to a really good place. I strengthened up my core a hell of a lot. I can talk about how I strengthened up my back in another video, I think, because that, you know, there's so much information. Um, and it took me, yeah, like six, seven months. I couldn't obviously, it was mortifying for me not being able to stretch my back. You know, I had a compulsive personality. I was obsessed with stretching my back and then I couldn't. And my arabesque, you know, was one of the things I was so proud of that I worked really hard on, you know, and I didn't want to lose that. That made me freak out. But I'm the pain, the bone healed pretty quickly. And then it was just like making sure it didn't get stiff. However, the APPI people said, you know, when you go back, don't do any cross training, don't do anything, you know, you can't do your ballet training on top of what you've been doing here. There's too much for your back. You're gonna need to just do the ballet, you know? And I said, yeah, okay, cool. Like I would have gotten into a routine of doing loads of different things. So the idea of just doing ballet was also like a bit disconcerting, but I knew I had to just do that. So I went back and kept on with my exercises. This was now, I'd, I'd been off seven months, I'd missed everything. And um, I went back and they were all like, oh, hi, and I was like, hi. And I was the top of, you know, the top of my class before. And I went back and suddenly, you know, this other girl had done Masha. And she was, you know, walking around like the big I am. And I was just like, okay, you're queen bee now. Okay, I get it. <laughs> and then um, all I wanted to be able to do was to achieve um, doing well in my Vaganova exam. And my teacher still put me center of the bar. She, you know, I didn't fully expect that, you know, and I didn't feel like I deserved that. I'd been off so long, but I was still there. 
and I was doing because I'd worked so hard on my rehab, my core was strong, hadn't been on point properly for a while, but it came back quick. I worked really hard. And you know, then my teacher started to use me as an example saying, look, she's been off six months and she's doing all these pirouettes. What's wrong with you? That kind of thing. So, you know, I did a lot of practice at night to try to catch up, you know, with my strength. It was just a strength thing, but it came back quick. And then as you can see in the posts I post, and I'll post a little extract at the end of this video, you can see like, you'd never know the year I'd had. You'd never know. However, in the exam, and I'll, I can show you the exact exercise probably, um, in the exam, I, by this point, my back was really tight on the left side, which is where it happened. Because I'd increased my workload far too quick um, but I had to, I had no choice. And so my back was increasingly tight and it didn't feel right. It felt, you know, didn't feel great. And when we were doing these jumps in the exam, some entrelacé, um, I did an entrelacé and then boom, another knife in my back. And I thought, oh Jesus, I've just come back and I fractured it again. And I instantly panicked, instantly. This is in front of God knows how many people. I can show you the picture in front of all these people. And so I ran back into the door behind and uh, I was like <sighs> panic breathing. I was having a mini panic attack. I couldn't get too panicked. I had you know, all the point work to do. And um, I thought, oh God, I fractured my back again. But I had to ignore the pain. So I went back in and the pain subsided because of my adrenaline. Completed the exam, did it very, very well. Super happy. Um, and then afterwards, towards the end of the day, my back, the inflammation came up and, you know, I had sprained my QL, which is the big thick muscle next to your spine and I'd sprained it. And that injury lasted until the very end of the year. So I was doing like, you know, bare minimum in class again. But my teacher said, look, I'm so sorry, you've got to, you've got to do, you know, your graduation show. There's no one else to do it. So I said, I know, I know, I know. So it was just like, you know, rehearsing to the bare minimum I could. And then a lot of deep heat, a lot of massage, a lot of TENS machines, a lot of everything. Um, but it was, you know, it was actually God awful. <laughs> and then finally I recovered when I left for the summer. But as you can see, you know, my graduation year was not perfect. You know, did I want to finish that school with the most perfect year, doing Nutcracker, doing, you know, the lead in, you know, lead in the Nutcracker and, you know, climbing to the top of the tree, etc., and feeling on cloud nine, not having any issues? Yeah, of course. But things happen, things happen you don't expect. And I learned a hell of a lot, but you can imagine how much determination and willpower and self-talk I had to give myself, you know? I, my teacher had made me think, you know, and believed in me to be the top, top of the class and at that point top of the school. And I had to go home for seven months, so you know, that was painful to deal with. So when I came back, I was determined to be as good as I was before, if not better. And I managed to pull it off, I really did. And I owe it to the team, but I also owe it to myself. And that time made me a really strong person when it comes to dealing with difficult situations, because you can handle anything if you, you know, believe in yourself a lot. And, you know, my teacher didn't give up on me. And she always called me weekly to check in how I was. Very sweet. And, uh, you know, she kept me believe, you know, she kept me wanting to return. And yeah, so I guess, you know, this video is to show that no matter what you see, you know, on social media with people in these exams, like, you know, you don't know the whole story, you really don't. And sometimes we've struggled a lot to get there, like, you know, myself included, obviously. So, and I've got many more stories to share like this. So, 
you know, grab your popcorn. Um, <laughs> but I guess also the message is it's okay that these things happen. It's completely normal in this industry. It's rare that someone goes through this career and this training without some kind of difficult time and situation. And it's just about how you deal with it. And you can handle it. You know, to be a ballet dancer it requires a lot of mental strength and perseverance. So anyway, that's the end of this story time. And please leave comments below if you enjoyed this and let me know what else you'd like to hear about. Be it good things, be it bad things. Like I say, you're probably more interested in the, in the suffering stories. <laughs> but let me know and I hope you enjoyed yourselves and keep dancing, keep believing. <laughs>